a very good morning to all the students today we're going to start our new chapter of chemistry portion that is chapter number 4 carbon and its compound so we have learned about carbon in our previous classes and we only know that carbon is an element we also know that carbon is a non metal it has atomic number 6 and mass number 12 by atomic number we mean that it is the number of proton in any atom and mass number is the sum of proton and neutrons so it has atomic number 6 and mass number 12 now this carbon name is derived from a latin word word which is carbo which means coal since it has atomic number 6 so its atom electronic configuration is 2 and 4 because in the k shell the maximum number of electrons is 2 and in the l shell it's 8 but here it has only 6 electrons so the outermost shell just has 4 electrons so this 4 electron in the outermost shell gives it a unique property that we will be covering today in our today's lecture now since the carbon is a versatile element it means that carbon forms all the bases of all the living organisms and many things which we use around so the carbon is found in all the living things in all the plants and animals and everything is made up of carbon based compounds so we call them organic compounds and a large number of things which we use in our daily life are also made up of carbon compounds so we can also see uh, we can also check the presence of carbon in any material uh, like uh, we see all the carbon compounds like we see in the air it's present in the form of carbon dioxide in the uh, in the earth it is present in the form of fossil fuels and many other forms so carbon is in everywhere and every day daily life we uses the carbon compounds so carbon is a versatile element which is almost there in every single thing in living and in also in non living things so how do carbon possess all these properties so because um uh, this important properties of carbon are which we will be learning today so this is carbon forms covalent bond since carbon has four electron in its outermost shell okay so every single atom wants to become stable they wants to be like the noble gases they wants to have the configuration of noble gases so in order to get the configuration of the nearest noble gas so they just try to complete the octet structure to become stable so carbon also wants to become stable so what if it would like to have four electrons so just imagine if carbon takes four electron or it gains four electrons so if it will gain four electron it will acquire a negative charge it will acquire a negative charge that will it will become a negative ion also we can call it anion because a negative ion is called as anion so when it will gain four electrons it will become carbon four negative but say in the nucleus there are only six electrons uh, sorry six protons okay six carbon atom in the nucleus it's six proton and here it's two electrons here and four electrons here imagine if it acquires four more electrons so now the atom will again will not be stable because it has six electron uh, protons in the center which will have six positive ch uh, charge and it will have eight negative charge okay because eight electron and then two more 10 so this nucleus will not be able to hold too much of four extra electron that too much of negative charge and it will not uh, be stable it will not survive okay so too much of negative charge it's not possible to hold for an atom to hold for an um, nucleus so six proton versus 10 electron it's not okay so it 
cannot accommodate four extra electrons in its outermost shell. So, okay, so we will leave this theory. So it is not possible to get four negative electrons. So it will try to lose its four electrons. Say if it loses its four electrons from here, since the nucleus has a positive charge, so this positive charge will not allow these four electrons to move out. So it is not easy for these four electrons to move uh, because the six proton will also hold them. So and it will not be able to hold just two electrons. So again, it's not possible. So that is why for carbon losing and ga gaining electron, it's not possible. So it cannot form either a positive ion nor a negative ion. So it cannot form anion or cation both ways. So to overcome this this problem, carbon forms covalent bond. Okay, so carbon forms covalent bond, which gives it. A very unique property so the covalent compounds of carbon so it combines with hydrogen and many other elements which give rises to many important compounds which are very useful in our daily life and which we see in our daily life so by adding hydrogen the compounds are called as hydrocarbons and hydrocarbons are many many um, many versatile things so it is the base of the organic chemistry uh, because it forms then um, many other things uh, carbon compounds then double bond triple bond and so on which we'll be learning later so this uh, actually what is the covalent bond so the covalent bond is actually the chemical bond which is formed by an equal contribution of or mutual sharing of electrons uh, between the two atoms actually uh, and in that, both the atoms get their uh, octet complete. So, both the uh, atoms get their electrons which they wanted. And they don't even uh, transfer the electron. They just share the electron. It's called covalent bonding, which we'll be learning in our next lecture. So, today it's just an introductory uh, topic of the chapter. Okay, now, this covalent bond, it is not, uh, because it's not possible to remove four electrons uh, from the carbon atom. And neither it's possible to add four electrons. So, it achieves. To achieve the stability, it forms covalent bond. That means it combines with other elements and it shares its electrons. Okay, so it neither donate nor accept, but it share with the other elements because other elements also have the same property. Uh, many other elements like hydrogen can also share the electrons, and then there are many more uh, oxygen also along with the hydrogen so another unique property of carbon it's that it's a tetravalent that means this carbon atom has four electrons so because of the four electron in its outermost shell um, it has the valency four okay so because it um, it combines with all four electrons so the uh, combining capacity of any electron uh, or of any atom is called as its valency so because it combines with four electrons so it is called as its valency so carbon has valency four that's why we call it a tetravalent so carbon is a tetravalent um, element okay so after this, it's next self-combination. That means carbon has a property to form long chains and it can uh, combine by itself. Okay, so it combines by itself means it has a unique property uh, by which it combines with itself from one atom to the other atom and it forms a long chain. Our example, it forms a long chain like uh, here it's a carbon and it will combine it has four electrons okay and then it will combine with other carbon like this and then the other carbon like this and then the other carbon like this and it can go on with combining so when we'll see that um, now uh, it could also be one another carbon here also, but basically when we say that it forms a covalent bond, it combines with uh, sometimes hydrogen here. So how it happens that we will be learning in next uh, lecture, but in short I will tell you that carbon has four electrons in its outermost shell. Okay, so again it's another carbon here. It's another carbon here. Okay, 
so four for this four for this and four for this so this um, it will combine with this and this carbon will combine with some other this with this this will some other and to this with this now here comes the hydrogen which has only one electron in its outermost shell so this will share the electron like this and this will share like this so hydrogen is sharing with this carbon and another hydrogen will be sharing with this carbon okay and another hydrogen will be sharing with this carbon and this will be sharing shared with this so this goes on and on so this forms a new compound okay it will be c6 and if oh sorry c3 and here it will count the number of hydrogen 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and h8 okay so when it comes 3 carbon it's called as prop so it's propane okay it combines uh, it combines or it forms a chain between another atom carbon atom by its own carbon atom so it is called as a self combination because it's forming a long chain and it is very useful because it generates or it gives us a many large number of carbon compounds so this is called a self combination because it's it's combining with itself and if you see here also it's six, uh, four carbon and then the hydrogen are 10 so it's c4h10 okay now so uh, this is a unique property of carbon which is self combining and it is also seen in the other element as well like uh, sulfur also does this and uh, sometimes um, covalent bond is seen in the many other elements uh, not only carbon like uh, hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur chlorine and many other elements forms a strong bond uh, like covalent bond okay so we have already read about ionic bonds do you remember that so ionic bonds are those bonds in which metals combine with the non-metals and it is the transfer of electrons but in the case of covalent bonds it is not the transfer of electron it's just a sharing of electrons so uh, this self combining property is also seen in sulfur but it's uh, sulfur and silica silica also but it's most common in the carbon so after self combination comes the catenation so this catenation is uh, forming a long chain so catenation also is a self combination like uh, it can be uh, just combining with self uh, forming a long chain not only chain but it can be also a ring structure so it's called as a catenation properties so both are same now all these are the property that it has valency for it is a tetravalent it form covalent compounds it is tetravalent it is it has a property of self combination or self combining carbon shows catenation so what is catenation catenation is the property of forming long chains or ring or open chains or a property of self combining uh, with the same uh, atom is called as catenation so this catenation or this forming of strong bonds by carbon atoms among themselves and with the other element makes carbon compound exceptionally stable so it becomes very stable and it gives rise to the many uh, new compounds and it also exhibits this property of catenation so uh, having the long chain structure with hydrogen or even with the other atoms they makes it very strong uh, same like uh, sometimes sulfur and silica also show this property of catenation but they don't don't make those uh, strong bonds they make weak bonds that is because they are unstable and they are not so very um, useful like carbon so after this we comes to next its occurrence of carbon so carbon occurs in nature in two states that is free state and combined state now when we talk about free state that means the carbon occur in the form of uh, in natural form uh, which do, nobody makes it it just occur by itself it's just original pure carbon like 100 percent carbon so it uh, it is in its free state of diamond and graphite and there's one more uh, third actually so carbon has allotropes okay so allotropy 
is that the element exists in a different forms so it has um, same chemical uh, property but a different physical structure that is called allotropes so uh, these are the various physical forms in which any, any element can exist so they are called allotropes and carbon shows allotropy so carbon has three allotropes called as diamond graphite and buckminster fuller now after this combined state combined state occur in nature in the form of compounds such as uh, carbon dioxide it is a compound because it is mixture of carbon and oxygen then carbonates like limestones marbles chalk etc fossil fuels like coal petroleum natural gases and then organic compounds like uh, carbohydrates fats protein lip, um, and so on wood cotton and many more so these are the um, occurrence of carbon in the nature after that we come move to the allotropes of carbon now we have read that carbon has three allotropes which is diamond graphite and buckminster fuller Uh, now allotropy is a property of um, of occurring any element in a different physical forms but they have the same chemical property uh, here we have read that diamond is very hard and graphite is soft but both are the form of carbon they are pure carbon actually because if it will burn diamond and if it will burn graphite will not get any residue behind because it's all carbon it will um, produce co2 only because carbon when combined with oxygen forms co2 so when diamond is burned or the when graphite is burned or even the buckminster fuller is burned we don't get any residue we just get co2 gas so they are the purest form of carbon that's why they are called as allotropes so um, these diamond and graphite are very common to us but this buckminster fuller is uh, found recently recently also means 20 years back or 30 years back but these have been known from us to the centuries so the diamond is colorless transparent substance it has extraordinary brilliance and it's heavy it's very hard it's almost the hardest natural substance on earth and diamond does not conduct the electricity um it is burned on strong heating on very strong heating and it only forms co2 gas so if we burn diamond then only co2 gas will be formed and no residue will be left behind so that means it is it is clear that diamond is made up of only carbon okay so it can also be denoted by its symbol c so we can also write c on diamond it's also carbon and it is also a carbon and this is also a carbon so structure of diamond so diamond structure is we will also take the help of the ncert book okay so diamond has an tetrahedral structure and here we can see that this each i'll show you that uh if it's one carbon so one carbon has um four electrons so these are the four electrons so all these four electron will combine with other electrons so like this will combine with this electron and again with this will combine with the other electron like this and this will one another electron and this is how it will form so many bonds okay so this is our structure of almost diamond so it's each and every single carbon is uh, having four bonds so it's called as tetrahedral structure uh, which gives it a uh, immense strength and rigidity so this diamond structure is actually a very giant molecule and in this the carbon atoms uh, are combining with one another in a um, um, this tetrahedral structure so each carbon atom in the diamond crystal is also linked with the four other carbon atoms by a very strong covalent bond so the this four surrounding carbon atoms are have they have four uh, vertices and they form a tetrahedral structure so therefore 
it is very very powerful because they bond uh, very powerfully and they are very strong bonds so it forms a very hard and rigid structure because no no uh, single uh, this bond is free every every bond is attached with the other carbon so because of this it forms a very hard substance and that is why it's a hardest substance or it's the hardest element so because of this it is very useful and it um, is uh, used to uh, make rock borders or it is used in drilling the oil wells and all or uh, the glass cutters so uh, the melting point is also very high and it is very very high like up to 3500 uh, degrees c uh, because a lot of heat is used to break the this strong covalent bond network uh, and then it is a very very um, hard so it's a non conductor of electricity because it doesn't have any free electron to conduct the electricity with so because it has no free electrons so it does not conduct electricity now moving to the graphite this graphite is having a hexagonal array this is the structure of graphite and it is different from the diamond structure so in this you can see that it's an hexagonal array so one carbon is uh, attached to although it has only four electrons but this is free you can see this is not having any bond only this is having bonds and it is having a weak van der Waals force with the other carbon atom but the other one is free so one end like uh, like in this this is the structure of graphite as So here, this one electron has four, this one carbon has four electron. So one is busy, one is shared and one is free. And this one is having a V van der Waals force with the other carbon atom. Perform the same lattice. So because of these uh, weak van der Waals forces, it does not hold it properly and it has free electrons all the all each and every single atom has one free electron. So these free electrons conduct the electricity first and um, this graphite layer is joined with three other carbon atoms. Uh, although it has a very strong covalent bond, uh, they form a uh, flat hexagonal ring and the uh, different layers of carbon in the graphite are very far apart from each other so they don't have any uh, covalent bond in this in this area so they have a weak van der Waals force because of that also it uh, it is uh, very very easy to cut and um, they act like a sheet uh, graphite is uh, you know very soft substance so that is why it is uh, used as a dry lubricant in the machine parts and it is a very good conductor of electricity because it has one loose electrons so because uh, it has presence of one free electron so it conducts the electricity so we are having a um, you know very uses of diamonds and graphite because of their different uh, structure so but the chemical properties are same and this buckminster fullerene is a ball like structure um, in this that is c60 because every carbon is attached with the uh, it's a 60 carbon bonds it's a ball like structure and it is also a group of carbon and uh, this is a cluster of 60 carbon atoms joined together to form a spherical molecule and since there are 60 carbon atoms in a molecule so but means the fullerene so it's also called a c60 and it is a, a round football shape so in this the uh, molecules are arranged in an interlocking hexagonal and uh, some pentagons also you can see here pentagonal rings of carbon atoms so this is all it's just come like this so the important is diamond and graphite that why do they don't conduct electricity and why do graphite conduct electricity because of the uh, because diamond do not have any free electron and graphite has a free electron so this is for your today's lecture so in the next we'll be learning about covalent bonds so till then do the question answers and study hard thank you